72 million years ago in Patagonia, the age of the Carnosaurs had come to an end. The ancient lineage of dinosaurs hailing all the way back to the Jurassic had died out and the reigning predators such as Mapusaurus and Giganotosaurus had long since gone extinct. But the lands of South America are not devoid of monsters, for a new lineage of dinosaurs has arisen. Born of the small feathered animals that would one day become birds, the Solorosaurs would produce their own breed of monster dinosaurs. In the north, their descendants, the Tyrannosaurs, would reign as the apex predators. But to the south, a new group of Solorosaurs, dinosaurs known as Megaraptors, would call Patagonia their own. These Megaraptors would later go on to produce what would be the largest predator to ever walk South America since the extinction of the Carnosaurs. At 33 feet in length and armed with giant claws, this massive Solorosaur ruled over the southern continent as one of the last great mega predators of the dinosaur age. This was Maik Macrothorax, the Argentine Ripper. Following the extinction of the Carnosaurs such as Giganotosaurus and Mapusaurus, large apex predators from South America were almost exclusively from a class of dinosaurs known as Abelosaurids. These Abelosaurids included animals such as the famous Carnotaurus, but aside from them, no other large predatory dinosaurs were known from what was essentially the last 27.5 million years of the Cretaceous period in South America. This changed upon the discovery of an incredibly large claw in the Portezuelo formation of Argentina in 1996. The claw was given the name Megaraptor as it was initially thought to have been an exceptionally large member of the Dromaeosaurid family, though in time it would be reclassified to its own group of dinosaurs taking the name Megaraptorans. Since the discovery of Megaraptor, additional fossils of this new class of animals have been recovered all around the world, many of all different shapes and sizes. However, none were larger than Megaraptor itself. That was until the discovery of an animal that would come to be known by the name Myep macrothorax. The first holotype for Myep, which consisted of an axis, dorsal, and caudal vertebrae, cervical and dorsal ribs, some gastralia, a left coracoid, fragmentary scapula, a partial right humerus, and a partial metatarsal were discovered disarticulated in 2019 at the La Anita farm by Alexis Rolando in the Santa Cruz province of Argentina. In 2021, this new animal was officially announced in a Research Square reprint, but at the time the paper did not meet the necessary requirements of the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature and was therefore only described as an informally named taxon. It wasn't until 2022 that this dinosaur was formally described by its own discoverer, given the name Myep macrothorax, with its genus name Myep being derived from an ominous entity in Aeonicanc culture that means the shadow of death that kills with cold wind, and its specific name macrothorax meaning large chest in Greek, which is a reference to its large thoracic cavity. Additionally, Myep is currently one of the most complete Megaraptorans known today, with almost 15% of the fossil skeleton having been recovered. Myep was an incredibly large theropod dinosaur, not only being the largest Megaraptor in ever discovered, but coming close in size to other massive dinosaurs. Myep has been estimated to have reached a length of around 9 to 10 meters, or 30 to 33 feet, making it the largest predatory dinosaur to have been recovered from South America during its time. The dinosaur would have also stood at a little over 2.7 meters in height, or roughly 9 feet and has been estimated to have weighed around 5 tons. It's possible that Myep was able to achieve such a massive size due to its relative slowly growing in size and taking the ecological niches that the carnosaurs once had. And due to this, it was able to achieve a size comparable to dinosaurs like Allosaurus, which would have shared an extremely similar niche. For most of its relatives, these niches were never open, and other Megaraptorans were merely medium-sized animals, with Myep being the first Megaraptor to achieve truly gigantic sizes, though its close relatives Tratienia and Erosteon, as well as Megaraptor itself, did reach fairly large sizes, coming in at around 8 meters in length, but were still much smaller than Myep. Myep, as mentioned before, is a member of a rather enigmatic clade of theropod dinosaurs known as Megaraptorids, which are nested within the larger Megaraptora family. 
Megaraptra is a large group of predatory dinosaurs that first appeared 130 million years ago in the Houtarivian stage of the early Cretaceous period and thrived across Gondwana, especially South America, all the way up until the KPG mass extinction event during the Maastrichtian stage 66 million years ago, with Maip itself being one of the youngest members of this family. Based on a recent abstract, it's believed that Megaraptora likely had a Eurasian origin, this being based on a brain case found in the Wessex Formation of England and the presence of taxa such as Fukui Raptor and Fuyang Venator being found as far east as Thailand and Japan. Megaraptors are medium-sized to large predatory dinosaurs that are known for their unusually long forearms and massive thumb claws, with the clade itself currently consisting of 11 different taxa with the first one ever discovered, that being Megaraptor, lending its name to the entire group. Within Megaraptoridae, Maip is by far the largest known member, though its closest relatives Tratienia and Aerostion are both still rather large animals. In the original publication for Maip, the authors proposed the idea of there being two unnamed clades being identified as just clade A and clade B respectively. Might being deeply nested within clade B, being a sister taxon to both Tridienia and Erostion, which also contains the more basal Okoraraptor. As for the clade Megaraptor itself, and Maip's place within the larger world of dinosaurs, that is far more complex. As the name would seem to imply, when the first fossils of Megaraptor were uncovered, scientists initially thought that the exceptionally large claw belonged on the foot of an extremely large dromaeosaurid dinosaur. A Megaraptor, if you will. However, this classification was not to last, and the claw was quickly put in its correct place on the forearm of the animal. Ever since then, the evolutionary origin of this clade has remained uncertain, as the group itself has bounced back and forth between different clades over the past decade. Initially, Megaraptora was classed as members of Solorosauria. Other paleontologists argued against this, later phylogenetically placing them as members of the Allosauroid group Neovenatoridae, making them potential late surviving carnosaurs. Others would then go on to argue a Tyrannosauroid placement, and they were later even made a sister group to Tyrannosauroidea, according to the authors that published Maip. This ends up making for an interesting contrast, as one group of Solorosaurs went on to evolve reduced forelimbs and robust skulls, while the other went in the opposite direction, evolving robust forearms with massive claws while having a relatively weak jaw. All in all, their true phylogenetic placement remains a bit of a mystery. However, according to a recent abstract published by the European Association of Vertebrate Paleontology, the Megaraptor in brain case found in the Wessex Formation strongly supports its connection to Solorosauria, finally solidifying its placement within Theropoda. Hopefully in the future, more Megaraptor in material will give us a better understanding of where exactly they belong in this tree. Maip macrothorax is believed to have been the apex predator of what is now the Corio Formation. First defined in 1984, the Corio Formation has a rich fossil record dating through the Maastrichtian stage between 72.1 and 66 million years ago. Despite being defined 40 years ago, paleontologists are only now getting a better understanding of the climate and environment during this time. The climate of the Corio is known thanks to paleosols, or buried soil preserved from that time, showing paleontologists that the climate during this period was rather temperate and warm for mid-high south paleo latitudes, making it seasonally humid. As for the environment, not a lot of data is currently accessible, but a 2022 publication described that the environment itself is similar to what's seen in modern-day northern and central Patagonia, that being a fluvial floodplain close to the small ancient seaways that existed in southern Argentina at the time. The presence of an ocean is known thanks to the presence of mosasaur and lamniform remains, and the presence of a freshwater plant community supports the existence of a floodplain. On the topic of flora, the Corio Formation preserves a plethora of plant life, especially a variety of pollen, the presence of pollen preserved confirms the presence of many different kinds of plants, such as ferns, ginkgos, cycads, pines, lycopods, gunneras, magnolia, and many other different kinds of angiosperms. The only other kind of plant that isn't known from just pollen is the extinct pine, Podocarpoxylon. 
As for fauna, Maip coexisted with and preyed upon many animals of all different shapes and sizes. According to a 2023 publication that reconstructed the musculature of Megaraptor and forearms, it's believed that the group itself, including Maip, evolved forearms designed to grasp their prey, allowing for the predator to get a firm grip thanks to its massive claws. However, newborn hatchlings had to worry about a great deal of smaller predators, such as snakes, frogs, the newly named Rhynchocephalian Notosphenus, and the giant and newly named Therian mammal Patagomyia. Small theropod dinosaurs such as the indeterminate Unanlagines and Noasaurids would have also preyed on hatchlings. As individuals grew larger, however, these smaller predators would have become prey, including the ancient birds Kukne and Yatnevis, along with two other mammals like the Gondwanathir Megalanodon and potentially Patagorhynchus, an ancient relative of the platypus. Once Maip reached their adult stages, these predators would have preyed on larger animals that existed in the formation. As it currently stands, there are only two other non-avian dinosaurs that are formally named from the Choreo, those being the Elasmarian Isosicursor and the Titanosaur Nola Titan. Just like the carnosaurs before them, Megaraptors also lived during the same time and place as other sauropods big and small, evolving larger to take down the young, sick, elderly, and injured. Maip also likely preyed on the Hadrosaurs, Ankylosaurs, and the other Ornithischians that are known from the formation but are currently of an indeterminate nature. While Maip may have been the apex predator of its environment, they were not entirely without potential competitors. Across Corio, remains from indeterminate Megaraptorids have been found. However, because the material isn't diagnostic enough, it is uncertain if the remains belong to either Maip or a different Megaraptorid. There's also a chance that Maip was a territorial predator, but since there's not enough specimens to prove this, there's also the chance that Megaraptorids were rather social, hunting in packs or family units. Hopefully more specimens will give us a better understanding of the social behavior of these animals as time goes on. In conclusion, Maip was rather important to its environment. As it stands now, it's currently the only large predator to ever formally be described from this formation, and no other large predators have challenged Maip's rule as the apex predator. Maip macrothorax is itself a relatively new discovery, only being published back in 2019. As such, its pop culture presence is extremely limited. It has no official game appearances, however it is playable as a mod in the video game Path of Titans, and is itself featured in several mods for the Jurassic World Evolution games. However, there is one piece of pop culture media that Maip has appeared in, that being the two-part Japanese NHK documentary Amazing Dino World 2 that was released in 2023. In this documentary, Maip is featured extensively, with many individuals of all ages and sizes being present. This documentary in particular follows a pack of Maip as they journey around Argentina hunting for food and clashing with other dinosaurs. Though the animal only has around 15 minutes of screen time in total, it is still an impressive amount of coverage for an animal that has only officially been described two years prior. And hopefully, as time goes on, more of this animal will make it into various forms of pop culture media. Maip Macrothorax was among the last of the dinosaurs. Living in the Maastrichtian period of the late Cretaceous, it, as with most all other dinosaurs that lived during this time, would go extinct 66 million years ago in one of the most dramatic extinction events of all time. Though the dinosaurs had been masters of the Earth for nearly 164 million years, their reign would come to a spectacular end when a massive 10 kilometer wide asteroid would fatefully strike the Yucatan Peninsula, ripping out a massive chunk of the planet and sending shockwaves across the entire world. This extinction event, known as the KPG mass extinction, was the second worst extinction event in the history of life on Earth, only outdone by the great dying that ended the Paleozoic era. The resulting ecological disasters from this impact would spell doom for most dinosaurs, and indeed 75% of all life on Earth. And Maip Macrothorax was among the many who would go extinct, lost to the sands of time forever. However, the legacy of Maip did not die with it for its lineage of Solorosaurian dinosaurs would end up surviving the mass extinction that killed so many others. Coming from the same group of dinosaurs as Maip, birds would make it out of the KPG extinction event alive, 
and come out as one of the most successful groups of animals to ever live during the Cenozoic era. And just 40 million years after the extinction of Maip, massive dinosaur apex predators would once again stalk the lands of Argentina as their ancient ancestors once did. So even though the massive dinosaurs of old may be gone, they will certainly never be forgotten, especially not near legendary animals like Maip Macrothorax, the Argentine Ripper. Thank you all so much for watching our latest Epoch Now video all about the Argentine Ripper, Maip Macrothorax. This video was incredibly fun to make and we hope you all enjoyed it as much as we did. This video was directed and narrated by myself, the Primal Earth, scripted by Spino Dragon 145, the Crimson Acro, and myself, edited by Spino Dragon 145 and myself, and the graphic designers for this video were Straight Up Murph, who did the creature design, and the Dinosaur Hunter, who made the thumbnail and animation. Lastly, the researchers for this video were Spino Dragon 145 and myself. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified of future videos. Additionally, don't forget to comment down below what videos you'd love to see in the future. This has been Epoch Now, and we will see all of you in the next video.